Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here. Welcome back to the Sunday recap, my weekly vlog where I talk a little bit about my last week in games and well, the week between uh, Christmas and New Year's, of course, um, you're a little bit more strapped for time than usually. So I played a little bit less than average in EVE Online. The War Deck had something to do with that as well, of course, uh, since I wasn't going to risk my Orca or anything like that under the War Deck. One thing that I did do was keep up with the blueprint copy business since all I have to risk there is an interceptor and some blueprint copies that aren't actually worth anything on a kill board. So I did do I think two trips to uh, Jita to try and sell some more of these blueprint copies uh, focused on structures and that is going alright but the prices are dropping both for the right tarot blueprint and for the uh, component blueprints as well. When it comes to the Astraus blueprint, that one is actually coming back a little bit. So what I do think that is happening is that a lot of people are making Raitaru blueprint copies and that uh, a lot of them have also switched from creating Astraus blueprint copies to uh, Raitaru's, which means that the uh, supply of those is down a little bit. Uh, and on the other side, you know, the Raitaru's are probably better than the uh, no, the uh, Astraus are probably better than the Raitaru's because they have much better defenses. If you want a first structure, I think you'll always want to go for a Raitaru. And of course on the 30th we had the attack on uh, the Raitaru's by the Wardek uh, guys. So they did a really decent job honestly with just uh, three Vindicators and uh, two uh, Ravens. They, they managed to take out the shields without too much trouble since I was alone. And uh, there was not much I could do except try and make it as difficult as possible. Um, and uh, after that, on Saturday, the armor timer came up. But by then, um, quite a few people had joined the war and uh, a lot of them also did show up. Uh, well, a lot. Uh, when I say a lot, maybe like half a dozen people did show up to, uh, to try and help with defending uh, the right terrorists for the armor timer. Uh, but they didn't really bother. There were only two uh, targets in a local. One of them showed up. Uh, and I did manage to uh, get one kill on them, uh, but they never really bothered trying to go after the right arrows again. I think with like six other corporations uh, joining the war between their attack um, on the shields and the uh, armor timer, which meant that those six corporations would be able to be involved in the final timer. They just said, well, we're not going to risk our vindicators um, at this point anymore. And uh, in the end, you know, I think that uh, while the war deck still has uh, like uh, one day to go, I think, um, I think it'll be okay. And I think that the structures are safe. Still very cool lesson, honestly, to uh, see what happens when uh, a structure is under attack, how good or how bad they are at defenses. I may need to change my fittings a little bit, which I might actually do uh, after, after this adventure. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just a very interesting thing to see how the timers work and all of that good stuff. So I see this as a, a nice little story, some nice content that was given to me uh, for Christmas by the Wardaker. So thank you very much for that. Next up, I also played a little bit of Overwatch, really not a lot, just a few quick play games, but I did get uh, a cool uh, skin for Zenyatta uh, with the special winter event. So I had to try him out at least a little bit and play a few quick play games. Uh, it's definitely uh, still a fun game. And if I'm not mistaken, there is a new character on the horizon for Overwatch as well. So I'm still planning to play that one a little bit. It's constantly been between should I do some more Overwatch or should I play some Doom mode? multiplayer to check that out and at the moment for me personally Overwatch is still winning out. I'm enjoying the game. Um, it's a little bit less fast paced than Doom, a little bit less cha chaotic as well. You've got uh, cl clearer objectives and uh, with the classes you can basically counter pick a little bit when your team gets into trouble. I do enjoy that um, and I think Overwatch uh, it's, it's got that blizzard polish so I, I'm still enjoying the game very much although I do play that in a very casual way. Just a couple games here and there. Uh, I think like I had maybe three sessions uh, over the last uh, over the last week or so so three days where I played one maybe two quick play games and that's about it but to me Overwatch has been uh, definitely an awesome game and worth the full price tag so uh, I think that uh, a lot of people will enjoy that um, if they do uh, still have to, to uh, give Overwatch a try for the first time absolutely awesome and I'm looking forward to more characters more gameplay modes uh, just to see what Blizzard uh, is planning to do with Overwatch in the future.
After that, we've got Stellaris. So we managed one small co-op play session uh, between my brother and myself when it comes to Stellaris. So not much has happened in the multiplayer co-op game that we're doing. Um, but of course, between the holidays, that's actually pretty normal since, well, it's pretty hard to uh, to find the time for, for several hours of playing together uh, when you've got all your holiday preparations and things like that to do. Um, on my single player game though, I've been able to put a few hours in there and I'm, I'm really happy. I think I've got an amazing start when it comes to that Stellaris game. Right next to me is an active ring world, which is uh, something that's actually pretty unique. Um, in Stellaris, I think like around 5% of the games actually have an active ring world spawn. And it's in my influence, so that means that when I have a strong enough fleet, I'll be able to try and take that out, which could be cool to watch. And of course, that also means that I have four really great worlds that I could potentially colonize after that as well. But I'm surrounded by uh, yeah, neighbors that don't like me all that much. I take Repugnant as one of the traits for my race so that I can actually give, him, give them some positive uh, traits as well. And that means that most races will not like me, but uh, I've been able to bribe them with energy credits and so far we've not been at war. And I've basically been able to expand uh, at least in, in size of space and number of systems that are within my influence well beyond uh, my neighbors at this point, which means that I think I'll be able to keep expanding, get more powerful than them. And uh, yeah, that this is a, an incredible start in this single player Stellaris game that I've got going there. So I look forward to playing more of that. I look forward to seeing how far I can push it, uh, that game. And I think that for the first time there, I will really try to get uh, close to end game uh, in, in a Stellaris single player game. It's been going so well that uh, I want to I wanna see what I can uh, do with my, uh, with my collectivist guys there. And finally, we have Homeworld Deserts of Karak. That game was like 70% off or something like that uh, during the Steam sales. And uh, I'm a major Homeworld fan. I think it's one of the most awesome games that I played on RTS in space that was well ahead of its time. And uh, for me, it was a no-brainer to uh, buy it at that price, like 16 euros or something like that. Um, I've been playing through the campaign. I'm actually trying to get a full recording of that. So you'll get a full gameplay of uh, Homeworlds of Karak coming in the upcoming weeks and I think it's really well done. It's basically a home world in in classic RTS uh, setting with tanks and things like that. Um, so I've, I've been enjoying that game quite a lot. I think graphically it's it's pretty damn impressive. It also has some very interesting features like smoke uh, cover and things like that that you can uh, that you can use there. And I love the air support that you can call down a little bit later in the game. So I've not been rushing through that. I'm basically trying to pace myself for maybe one video a day or something like that. So that I don't uh, rush through the game like I did with Doom um, but uh, it, it's looking pretty damn good and uh, so far Homeworld's Deserts of Karak looks like a very fun game um, that uh, that definitely brings me back to my Homeworld times and those were great times because it was an absolutely awesome game um, it has that incredible effect I'm really happy that they kept that in the game when you press spacebar and you go to your radar view it has that doom uh, sound there that is that is absolutely amazing and iconic um, so yeah a little bit of nostalgia right there with uh, homeworld deserts of karak and uh, i look forward to playing through that entire game and bringing you guys that experience as well so i think that's going to be it really uh, the week between christmas and new year i think it's normal that you play a little bit less than normal uh, but uh, for now guys thank you very much for watching and i will see you all next time send message grid updated Enemy railgun eliminated.